to everyone from around the world, brothers and sisters in Christ, family, Christ Jesus. <clears throat> That's for the record. The, uh, I'll be preaching from Isaiah chapter 12. Just a short word today of exhortation and encouragement. I feel a small virtue. Now, this virus is still around. Some face it worse than others. Because America is one of the, we have some of the highest, if not the highest death rate. And now, since they reopened, uh, I'm again to help, again to help. <laughs> yeah, now that we have uh, reopened, 40 states have increased. But just for the record, they always want to put politics in everything. The things that uh, they are asking us to do, the quarantine, Stay inside, wash your hands, wash your clothes. It's not something they made up. Praise the Lord, Pastor Nero, Liberia, Philippines. It's not something they made up. It's, it's an old biblical practice. The things that they are asking us to do, uh, man got, got that idea from God. So some countries have completely done away with it simply because they followed those procedures. <clears throat> I just want to read something for you before I get into the message. Just a few off scriptures. Uh, like in Leviticus, when God was instructing the priests, we thank God for the reading of his word. And we pray that God would be edified. Now there's no need uh, for no saint of God to panic. He didn't tell us to get shook up. He told us to look up. <clears throat> like I said before, this is an awakening, but it's not necessarily a judgment of God. This is the foolishness of man and the result of sin. There will be, there have been some plagues that were God ordained, but this is a, uh, a result of prophecy and the carelessness of men and the result of sin, but it, it is also a wake up call uh, to let everyone know that God is still in control, that without him, we can do nothing. But nevertheless, those of us that love the Lord, we have no need to fear. Praise God. I have prayed, I have prayed for <clears throat> several people from a dis distance that have called for prayer. And they had real, real symptoms. But <clears throat> God raised them up immediately. So at least we do know that they our prayer that power over the virus. But to show you something, especially those of you in America, uh, it's not a political thing. What they're asking you to do is quite biblical. And they didn't create this. For instance, in Leviticus 15, I'll just, be, I'll just read some things. Verse 16. If a man's seeds of compilation go off from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. <clears throat> and every garment and every skin wherein the seed of compilation shall be, shall, well, shall be shall be washed with water and it be clean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with in the seed of compilation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. And if a woman has an issue and her issue is in her flesh, it be blood, she should be put apart seven days, and whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her, uh, touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if it be on her bed or on anything where, where she sitteth when he touches it, it shall be unclean until the evening. If any man lie with her at all, and her flower be upon her, he shall be unclean seven days. And all the bed upon he lies with shall be unclean. But this goes on to just to say, uh, 
But if a woman, verse 25, has the issue of blood many days out of the time of a separation, or if it runs beyond the time of a separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of a separation, she shall be unclean. Uh, every bed wherein she lieth, all the days of her issue shall be unclean as the bed of a separation. And whatsoever she sitteth on shall be unclean as the unclean of a separation. And whatsoever, whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then, shall, then, then she shall number herself seven days. After that, she shall be clean. What I'm just trying to show you is that in this situation here, just talking about different things, they were instructed to wash, wash their clothes, wash whatever they touch. If they touch something, and, and that's sort of like this virus today. People tell you you can, you can get it by touching something. You know, you're sanitized. Restaurants are sanitizing everything down. Things are sanitizing everything down. And to those who work around uh, people, especially those in uh, assisted living, they're instructed to wash their clothes, wash themselves, on a daily basis, come home, wash your clothes in case the bacteria is being carried. We have been instructed to wipe down everything, including our hands. You see, water is a type of cleansing. This, so what they're asking us to do is not uh, anything political. It's, it's biblical. Uh, <clears throat> for instance, in the Leviticus 13. Now, now, I'm not a doctor, but at times, <clears throat> God has given me wisdom and knowledge that has, uh, my mother doctor, but God has given me wisdom and knowledge on, on several occasions that uh, proved the doctors wrong. I told them one thing, they told me another. But when it came out, what the Holy Ghost showed me was correct. So, been filled with the Holy Ghost sometimes because the Holy Ghost is a doctor. He gives us wisdom and knowledge. But now listen to this, for instance, Sometimes when you having an infection or a disease or something, many times symptoms of various diseases are similar. And when they first diagnose you, <clears throat> sometimes they call it by the worst of the disease, better safe than sorry. Many times doctors give you the worst, worst case scenario to be safe. My mother was in the medical field for over 40 years, you see. So, <clears throat> There may be several diseases that start off the same, one deadly, the other not. But a lot of times, uh, they'll treat you for the deadly. Worst case scenario. But you had the lesson. And so it is sometimes, even with this virus. It may have similar symptoms. I, I knew a young man who had, it seemed like all the symptoms couldn't breathe, <clears throat> couldn't breathe for hours in pain to the point where when they called in the doctor, they, the ambulance came and got, got him. And everybody just knew that it was the virus. Had all the symptoms, but it wasn't. It wasn't. I think it was pneumonia or something like that. And when they sent him home, he recovered. But it wasn't. <clears throat> But they called him in because it looked exactly. So listen, the Spirit of the Lord says, don't get too shook up because you feel a certain way. Don't speak anything up on you. If you truly have it in a real way, oh, it'll manifest itself. But don't be so quick to jump. I, I, watch this. And uh, I'm just going to read quickly. And this is the signs of leprosy. Leviticus chapter 13. <clears throat> and the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto uh, one of his sons the priest. Well, you see, brethren, back in the day, the day of the Lord, your preachers were the doctors. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Even in the Old Testament, they came to the priest to, and for, for, for the priest to speak in behalf of them to the chief surgeon, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, they didn't go to the physicians of the Babylonians. They went to the priests. And the priests would follow the instructions of God as to what to do. So there should always be healing. In a real ministry, there is healing. There is, I feel the virtue. There is the power of God. And the people should be able to trust in the ministry that they are under to manifest the power of God. Because when you give faith and you trust in the ministers that lead you to God, you are trusting them with your very soul. You are trusting that man of God with eternity. And that's not a light task. That's why preachers shall get the greater judgment. Because, my God, we send people into eternity by the words we preach. Heaven or hell, may God have mercy on us. <coughs> and so even the law and the prophets, they went to the priest upon God's word. The book of James said, if any sick among you, James said the same thing, call for the elders. But if the elders don't know God in the power of prayer and in the power of the Holy Ghost, that church is in trouble. <coughs> you see? That's why we see so many healings and miracles, because we believe in the word. And to uh, the, the sister that emailed us about her baby, we want to... Uh, Give a shout out. And uh, she sent us photos. Baby Madeline. Baby Madeline. We want to give a shout out to Baby Madeline and say welcome. Welcome into the world of the living. Especially when you are a miracle child. A mother saw one of the testimonies. Uh, how one of our sisters testified how that a baby was reformed in the womb. And her baby had all types of uh, things wrong with it. I mean, amazingly so. And she emailed us, praise God, and said she heard that testimony. God had already touched her baby. So she said, but she's believing God. <clears throat> and we believed with her. And we didn't hear from her for a while, but then she emailed us not long ago and sent us a picture of the beautiful baby. And told us, you know, the baby is still growing. God is still working on it. But everything they said should not happen. The baby's doing fine. Praise God. And many of those things have gone. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank Whoa. You, Jesus. So God bless Thank baby Madeline. You, Hallelujah to God. You, oh, you see, the testimonies that we give are real in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Full of virtue. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God for his healing power. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Thank God, my God. Oh, my God, for the praises that he puts in our mouth because of his goodness and his power. Yes, sir. So, here we go. Now, so the, God tells the priest that they come in and their skin look a certain way. Uh, this is what you do. He says if the bright spot be white in the skin of the flesh and in the sight it be not deeper than the skin and the hair thereof be not turned white then the priest shall shut him that hath the plague shut him up for seven days why to keep it from spreading that's why that's what these doctors are telling us now don't get me wrong i believe in miracles i believe in the impossible and then many times when the doctor said no i said god could and he did we used to have so many healings that sometimes we all would go to the same doctors that the doctors would give us respect. When the people would say, uh, we're going to church to get prayer for, the doctor would stop the whole procedure. He would stop the whole procedure. They, they would stop. She would stop the whole procedure. No matter how serious it was, they would not do it. They said, well, you go get prayed for and you come back. And now, if the prayer, if the people had the faith that it was God's will, when they went back, they were healed, no problem. If they weren't healed, then I tell them do your next best thing because we don't fake it. But 99% of the time, the people went back healed. God is a good God. But see, notice what it did. They shut him up for seven days. This is what they're saying. Quarantine yourself. <clears throat> it's a biblical principle. 
Not that it could heal you, but in case this was infected, it would stop it from spreading. The woman, I think it was in New Zealand, the woman who, they, I think they got rid of all of them. The first thing she did was quarantine. She locked down for maybe five weeks or so. She had locked down. Other countries did the same thing. But America, God help us with our political division. Who cares if you're Republican, Democrat, Democrat, or uh, 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 liberal, or whatever. <clears throat> We're fighting the same disease. Party got nothing to do with it. And I, I, though I have seen many miraculous healings, and at Tabernacle they call for the elders first. Then we do the next next thing. But we don't knock the medical profession. We just know that it is not our final word. We respect all those that do good for all people. But understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> In this case, uh, the medical profession is telling us right. When they told us to lock down for a moment. This is biblical. They didn't create this. I don't know if they know it or not. This is what God told the children of Israel in cases like this. They said to quarantine, to stop the infection. This is biblical, people. It's got nothing to do with race, creed, color, gender. I'm not going to say it's common sense. It's God-given sense. Now, this here I'm reading is some 4,000 years old. So what these doctors are suggesting is nothing new. It is something that works. And say, so watch this. Shut yourself in for seven days, and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day. And behold, if the plague is in his sight, be it stay, and the plague spread not in his skin, then the priest shall shut him up for seven days more. The priest's going to look at it, and if the plague in his sight be a state, meaning it has not spread it, then the priest will shut him up for seven days more. Now, that's 14 days. <laughs> Isn't that what they're telling you? Go home and quarantine for 14 days. And then, all of you that have been told to go home for 14 days, if you have a doctor that's keeping up with you, I guarantee you, if they're going to call you within the seven day, they're going to call you to see if your condition has gotten better or worse. And if it hasn't worsened at all, then they know you safe. They, they may let you go or may tell you stay in for seven more days. A total of 14 days. Why? It's because, in this case, it looked like leprosy, but it may not have been. But they treated it like as though it was. That's what I'm trying to tell you all. Don't get shook up because you got a fever. Don't get shook up because you got a pain here and there. That doesn't mean you have the virus. But better safe than sorry. You see, I know they take tests and all, but listen, things ain't always right. But they're going to give you the worst case scenario. Go home for 14 days. Why? Not that it might heal you, but it keeps it from spreading. So what they're telling us is biblical. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with the mask. Nothing wrong with uh, uh, lockdown within reason. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with being quarantined. It's biblical. Why? To keep it from spreading, to protect your fellow man. Amen. Not to take away your uh, constitutional rights. You see, <clears throat> you know, uh, people have gone to jail for giving people AIDS and they knew they had it. Now, if you really know you have this virus and you really know you got it and you got all the bad symptoms, then what should they do to you? And you go in the midst of multitude knowing you have the real symptoms and people are dying. No, the doctors are not trying to take away your constitutional rights. It's just people being foolish and selfish. That's all. Because it's a God-given principle. They didn't start. It says, but if the but if the but if the scab spread, verse seven, much abroad in the skin, and after that he has been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that behold the scab spread it in in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. When the doctors call back and they see that you've got all the symptoms now, 
and that your health is declining, then they can truly say coronavirus. But guess what? The priest didn't know if it was leprosy at first, but it looked like it. It looked like it. It had the same symptoms. So they treated it as such. What did they do? They quarantined the person to keep it from spreading just in case. And if it wasn't, they were free. But if it was, guess what? They stopped the infection from spreading. So this is a, it, 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 it's a Bible, it's a Bible principle. And it says that concerning several things. You quarantine them. The first thing you want to do is stop it from spreading. 15th chapter, Leviticus, you wash. Wash your clothes, wash your hands, wash yourself. If you touch something that might have been infected, uh, you, you, uh, someone that was infected, better off, wash everything down. Yeah, so it, it, it's all right. It's all right. Now, I don't, I don't think the authorities would like me to say this. But I live in America. I wouldn't advise nobody to jump up there and take some vaccine. I just wouldn't advise it, especially people of color. Oh, Bishop, I'm sorry. I just don't trust the system like that. They have done some terrible things with vaccines to people of color. On purpose, but we're trusting God. He's gonna. This too will pass. So, to those of you that are in America, wear your mask. Uh, wash your hands. If you work around a place where you know there's a possibility, wash your clothes. This is not man-made. It's biblical. I don't know if the doctors know this or not. But it's biblical. Don't get upset if they have to shut down businesses again. Lock it down for a season. We just opened too soon and too fast. That's all. I feel a virtue. So to all of you that are saints, if, if you, uh, you may have a problem hearing what the world said, but this is the voice of a prophet. Nothing wrong with sanitizing your hands. Nothing wrong with being quarantined for a season. To make sure if you've got anything done spread to see if you have it or not. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with getting tested. But let your body be, let your body be the last, last, uh, last word. Let your body have the last say so. If you get a test and they say you have, you really got it, but don't nothing ever happen to you. But trust me, you ain't got it like they say. Now, also remember in vaccines, unless they change it. If, when they give you a vaccine, this is what I don't understand how they're going to do. When they give you a vaccine, even for children, if you read the paper at the hospital, at the children's doctor, this says it can kill your child. Mm -hmm. Now, when they give you a vaccine, they put a little bit of that germ in you so that it can flare up in your body and your body can build up a reaction. Now, that's how they've been doing it. Now, they say it is dormant, but medically dormant, but is alive enough to bring it up in your body because your body fights it off and builds up antibodies by nature, by God. So the reason why I say be careful with these vaccines because in order for it to work, and I don't mind being corrected, they got to put a portion of that germ. Hey, if the coronavirus is not in me, I don't want you to put it in me. Under no circumstance. They that are whole, we don't need a doctor. Only them that are sick. So you be careful with vaccines. They putting stuff in you that's not there. Understand that. Now, Isaiah, precious God, I feel the virtue. Let's give God glory. Thank you. I feel the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the virtue. Thank you, I feel the virtue. Jesus. This is wisdom from all Hallelujah to God. Thank now you've heard the prophet say, it's all right. Don't panic. Praise God. It's all right. Amen. To quarantine for a few days. And, and in the Bible, what they say, 14 days. But just to make sure you don't have it. So that lets us know then that there's something medically about 14 days. Within 14 days, if you have something, it's going to show forth in the different. Mm -hmm. Something like that, you see. Yes, uh, and nobody's told me that. I'm just going on the scriptures. 
But is, is it a coincidence that they say quarantine for 14 days? If, if, yeah. if you've got mild symptoms or if you've been around, they don't know if you've got it or not, they say quarantine for 14 days to be safe. And if there's nothing that flares up, you're all right. You see? Praise God. I know they got these aid, some medic people, whatever they can carry. But if that be the case, anybody can have it. And nothing we can do except trusting God. But let your body be the uh, final judgment of how you feel. And then you be honest. If you know that you've been around somebody that was truly diagnosed with that and they really got it, even though you feel all right, then respect those that don't know you've been around them. And give yourself a little space just to be sure. I feel the virtue. I feel the virtue. But many of you that's got what they call real mild cases, don't be so quick to jump. Because just like the leprosy, it looks like the virus, but it doesn't mean it is. All the symptoms, and you might fit the description of those that are candidates to receive it. But let your body be the final judge of it. Amen. Don't, don't start thinking yourself sick, people. The Holy Ghost doesn't want you to panic. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, my God, I got the virus. Oh, hold on. You see what I'm saying? Don't get in a panic. Don't get caught up in anxiety. Then you're walking in doubt. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, don't give it to yourself. You have a symptom, don't be so quick to jump. You don't want to panic. Then that shows a lack of faith in God. God will allow you to do what you need to do. But, like I said, Nothing wrong with what the doctors in America are telling us. It's not any doctor trying to get over. It is not political. It is biblical. And that knowledge was first given to man, to the people of God, by God himself. <clears throat> Quarantine. Stop the spreading first to determine what it is. And if it's not dangerous or detrimental, then they can be released back into the population. What did he say? Wash. Wash your clothes. Wash your hands. Wash yourself. Wash anything that is come in contact with. Sanitize. You see? It's biblical. So what these doctors are telling us is it's biblical. It's spiritual. And they ain't the first to say this. This was ordained by God as a way of stopping <clears throat> diseases from spreading <coughs> as, as best they can. Precious God, we thank you, Lord, and we appreciate you. We ask that the word of God will go forth and that the spirit of God will be up on us. We love you. Oh, I feel a virtue. I feel a virtue. Give us a word of encouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus. Interesting. All right. So now that you've heard from a prophet, now you know that these things are all right. And I read from the scriptures. So what they're asking is nothing. You know, just the technique that they're using, and it has worked for other countries, along with whatever else they've done, is over 4,000 years old. And it was first given to man by God to the priests of Israel as to how to determine if something is contagious or not. Okay? <clears throat> he even locked them down to one of the plagues of Egypt. He said, I'm going to send a hailstorm, Exodus. He said, everybody on the outside will not survive. And the Bible says that all the Hebrews and the Egyptians that feared God went on lockdown and they lived. <clears throat> so we just want to do things decent and in order, that's all. Now.